Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode number 44, and we are here more or less where we left off. Uh, I'm not sure if we faced this guy. I think we did, but just in case. If he will ever face me, hey. Getting chilly, which is he could ride a Pokemon. Well, catch a Pokemon, teach it surf, and uh, should be pretty easy. Although, I okay, I faced her as well, actually. Right, because there's the treasure hunter's house. Okay. Can I get like a zoomed in view here? No, oh, there we go. Zoom in. Doesn't really tell me much though. I'm in the middle of this route somewhere. Okay, well, we are in the middle of the deep blue sea, but uh, we will press on and we're probably actually not too far from Moss Deep. Do you want to see if there are any other trainers here though? Just train up a bit. I like this guy. Foo -foo -foo -foo. I dive deep underwater to go deep undercover. Plumbing the depths is where I excel. It's one thing that's really weird that I've never really thought too much about is that there's so many trainers in this game, and really all Pokemon games, that make really weird sounds. Like, I've never heard somebody, like, on the street, like, what if somebody walk up to you and went, foo 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 I'm having a bad day. Like, you think they were insane. Like, people just don't talk that way, or the way that a lot of these characters talk. But uh, I'm guessing maybe it's, like, a cultural thing where, I mean, I haven't heard, like, people from Japan say foo 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 either, so I don't, maybe it's a translation to something that... I'm not reading correctly, I don't know. But anyway, it just always strikes me as really odd and really awkward to read when they make strange uh, guttural sounds like that. Alright, so uh, I'm pretty sure I just saw that Golbat was... Golbat, Golduck was faster. So let's use Bulldoze. Slow things down a bit. Oh, so that's really cool. Um, that makes your Pokémon the water type, as, as it said. Um, which doesn't really matter too much, but it does remove my... Um, my same type of attack bonus, so it will help him a little bit out. Um, if I know any water moves, that'd be nice, but I don't. Um, now, if he knew, say you had like a Pokemon that could learn a water and an electric move, and you use Soak, um, or really just Soak and an electric move, um, that could be good, so you could then do super effective damage to them. It's a really kind of cool, fun strategy, is that in double battles, you can actually Soak a Shedinja. I'm sure you guys remember from my inverse battle, Shedinja is the one that is only affected by super effective attacks. So normally it has like, I think, five, maybe six weaknesses. Ghost, Dark, Rock, Fire, Flying, maybe five. But um, but if you soak it, it only has two weaknesses. So um, what's a really interesting strategy is to have a Shedinja in a double battle and to um, have a Pokemon that knows soak. Uh, my berries are all mixed up again. They grow a few more, but not as many as I did the other day. Um, oh, I typed it, I did it by fewest, just so I could see what I didn't have enough of. I was planting those. Alright, also I don't know why I'm using orange berries, I literally have basically an infinite supply of citrus berries. I'm just using those from here on out. Um, yeah, if you soak your own Shedinja and your opponent doesn't have any grass or electric moves in their team, then you pretty much win. I mean, they can. there's things like Sandstorm, or um, your know, Rocky Helmet, that kind of stuff will also cause your Ninja to take damage, but, um, you know, it, it, especially in like competitive battling where they a lot of times do actually have like two moves of the same type just for different reasons, because Stab is so good and so useful in, um, at that competitive level. So a lot of the advice I've been giving, I guess, is more of like a um, more single battles. Uh, more oriented towards them, because in single battles you very rarely want to have two moves of the same type. It's extremely rare. You really want coverage. But in double battles, the same rule kind of applies, but you're a lot more likely to see, like, you know, a Kyogre or a Xerneas or something have two water attacks and two fairy moves for different reasons. For example, Xerneas likes to have Dazzling Gleam and Moonblast, so it has one spray attack and one single target really powerful attack. Um, Kyogre likes to have Origin Pulse and um, Water Spell, because in some cases Water Spell will do more damage when your health is high, in other cases Origin Pulse will do more damage, but um, and, you know, there are other moves you can teach it too, Thunder and Ice Beam and um, etc. But, oh, evasiveness, that's not good, but luckily Slate still hit. Oh, it's not very effective, I'm sitting here. No, it is effective, I'm thinking it's a... No, it's not very effective. What? Oh, because it used Camouflage. I am not paying attention to this fight clearly. Um, hmm. Steel would not be very effective, but why isn't Headbutt not very effective? I'm going to use it anyway, because why not? Um, it's already almost defeated. 
but yeah, so even, uh, you know, people have just figured out that it's actually better for, like, a Kyogre to have two water moves, because, and that's actually understandable, too, because Kyogre is, um, it has a, um, an ability that allows it to summon the rain automatically, so when you get stabbed plus the rain, it really is not surprising that your stab attacks are that much better. Um, and in fact, Xerneas is really the same way. It doesn't have weather, but it does have fairy aura, which I think um, increases fairy attacks by 30 additional percent. So when you have stab plus one of those additional bonuses, just the amount of damage your stab attacks do will be so much greater than coverage moves that it, it very rarely makes sense to use a coverage move. Kind of similar to how um, Melodic made so much more sense to use sur Surf, even when it's not super effective than it was to use Hidden Power, because Surf is so much more powerful. Alright, level 38. Doing pretty well. And Psychic. Okay, interesting. So, oh, I am tempted. I wish I could see my stats, because Psychic is, I think, base 90, and, yeah. And 100% accurate, and can lower your target special defense. Um, which is nice, because it's stronger than Zen Headbutt, it's more accurate than Zen Headbutt. Uh, I think I'd rather have a flinch chance of the two. But if it wasn't for the fact that our attack stat is higher, I would definitely go with um, Psychic. But because I'm pretty sure our attack is a, a good bit higher, as much as I'm tempted, we're gonna go with uh, we're gonna go with um, what does this do? Oh, contest. I keep thinking it's gonna show you like your different Pokemon. I guess the Switch Pokemon menu, but it's not. Keep old moves. Give up. Yes. All right. But yeah, we're just gonna stick with Zen Headbutt. And hey, that'll be useful against this Tentacruel here. Uh, which may or may not be faster, but probably not. It is, okay. These ten of cruel is faster than I thought. Um, and bear is actually a really smart move to use against a, a Tang, because it basically doubles your defenses. So even though Zen Headbutt is super effective, it's kind of not. Um, I'm going to use Boulders, though, because it gives us like a free turn, essentially. Although Brian, I think, is going to do a lot more damage once we... Lower his health. So that's good, because if we had used another Zen Headbutt, it could now use Brine at less than half of its health and do a ton of damage, knocking out Slate. But because we use Bulldoze, we should be faster, which means as long as this hits, and it does, uh, this should be the knockout. It's going to be close. It is. Good job, Slate. Strategy for the win. Alright. And just like that, Swimmer Spencer goes down. Alright, so you guys may be thinking, Aravel, weren't you going to go to the Mood Reminders house and uh, start the episode there last time? And I was, but life is what happens when you're making other plans, as they say. Um, and I decided, I only have two heart scales, and I thought about what moves I would use them on. And I realized there are actually three moves, at least three moves, maybe just three moves, um, that I want to teach from the Mood Reminder. Two to Blaziken, which you could learn now, and oh, Double Battle. Um... Let's put Altaria in the front, and hey, we can Mega Evolve, that'll be fun. I, I dig it for the Altaria Knight, right? Let me just double check. Yes, it did, sweet. My big sister has a strong Pokemon, don't cry when you lose. Aw, I came all the way down to the beach to be with my little brother. I want to have a Pokemon battle to take my mind off it. They're pretty far from the beach. Hopefully they're being safe. I guess they do have inner tubes, but those can deflate. Sis and Bro. Hopefully it's like a Gyarados. Now oh, I guess Pelipper. I wouldn't call that a strong Pokemon, but I guess compared to... Oh, Wishcast. Okay, that, that could be fairly strong, although honestly not really that much better than Pelipper. It seems like being the higher level, maybe hers is the Pelipper. They're both male, so I can't really rely on that. Um, all right, I'll get back to what I was saying in a second. I forgot to use a Lepa Berry. Well, Dretz. Um, but this is actually good, because we can use Bulldoze, but it's going to be not effective against Pelipper. Um, as well as Avis. Maybe we should just go for uh, Zen Headbutt. Let's go for Zen Headbutt and Secret Power against... Let's go for Wish... Whiskash, because Whiskash... I was going to say Wishcash, for obvious... You know, just rolls off the tongue better, but it is Whiskash. Um, no relation to Johnny Cash. But... Um, Secret power will do more damage. Ironically, Fly knows my attacks can be a lot higher. If it wasn't for the fact that Mega Alteria has a much higher attack stat, clearly, Fly would actually Fly as Alteria would actually probably do more than um, Secret Power as Mega Alteria. Um, so Wish Cash is water and ground, kind of like Quagsire. 
kind of redundant with Quagsire in, in some ways. Um, you don't really see it too much, but I like the design of it. It's a cool Pokemon. It's just not really that special, at least right now. I can see them giving a third stage to it one day. That'd be cool. Maybe in a later generation. But it looks like Whiskash is probably going down. I'm well, not quite. You can see how powerful Megalteria is there. And how fluffy. Uh, stockpile is an interesting move, which allows it to increase its defense and special defense. And it can either use, um, I think the moves are called Swallow or Spit Up or Spit Out. Uh, swallow kind of like is Recover, and it does more damage based on how much you stockpiled. And Spit Up or Spit Out, whatever it's called, it does more damage. So Swallow is more recovery, Spit Out is more damage. Um, anyway, let's use Bulldo excuse me, Bulldoze just because... Uh, it should be enough to finish it out. I'm actually not so sure of that. Alright, 90% chance. Let's go for Zen Headbutt. And uh, Ava can focus her powers on Pelipper. Even though it says normal type, because of our ability, it's actually working as a fairy type move. So it does get stab. And the boost from, um, from her ability, Pixelate. Alright, so anyway, um, basically I was just saying that because... We have three moves to learn, only two heart scales. I'm gonna wait until Expelled evolves, and then maybe I'll have another heart scale by then, or yeah, you know, if not, I'll just decide what to uh, do at that time. But might as well wait and do it all at once. So Spit Up doesn't do much damage when you only have one stockpile, unfortunately. Unfortunately for him. Um, unfortunately for me, I don't have any more Zen Headbutts, but Rock Tomb should still do a decent amount of damage. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and roost up just to play it safe here. I'm sure I don't need to. Honestly, probably just a waste of time, because worst case scenario, I could always switch Pokemon, but why not? Definitely happy to have a chance to be showing off Mega Altaria. It's my first time ever using one, and um, not my first chance using a Mega Evolution, although I guess it is my first time having a Mega Evolution on my real team. I use like Mega Charizard, I think Mega Lucario, and maybe one or two others for fun on my X Let's Play, but they weren't part of my main team. Because my main team was... Um, entirely new Gen 6 Pokemon. Ironically, I didn't have any Mega Evolutions because the Gen 6 Pokemon uh, did not, and I guess still do not, as far as I can recall, have Mega Evolutions. It's only the older Pokemon. It's really one uh, mechanic that I, I wish they had stuck with, the Mega Evolution one. Um, it was actually pretty cool, and it was... Yeah, I kind of think of these days they're adding too much to the game and too many mechanics, like between, like, weather and abilities and held items and mega evolutions and mega stones and primal reversion you know all that stuff it's just it's a lot to remember and terrain is now a big thing and so it's like i mean there's there's terrain there's auras there's weather it's just a lot of different things for like somebody new to pokemon it would be i could see it easily being overwhelming and now they have like z moves and dynamaxes and i just don't know much about dynamaxes and dynamax is different from gigantamax but not really and then there's a turnamax that only a turnus can use it's just it's just too much in my opinion um I think the Mega Evolution was, was great. I think that was a cool idea, but it, it probably should have stopped there. Um, I've gotten used to Z moves. I, I kind of, you know, came to like them more than I originally did, but even so, I'm not sure they were really you know, all that necessary. Um, they did grow on me, but so far, at least Dynamax has not grown on me, but who knows? Maybe once I understand more about Gen 8, I'll change my mind. Um, it's like, we've done everything we can to Pokemon except make them bigger. Okay, so I think to get this, you probably have to. Um, dive under the water, because I don't see any other way to get there. So, we don't have dive, therefore we can't go there quite yet. Hidden Pokemon there. Let's go around this rock. Ah, oh, I see, now we're down by, almost by Cetopolis. In fact, I think we're probably in the island formation that contains Cetopolis. Um, but we're not going to go there yet. I think you actually can, there's not much to do if I recall, though. I remember doing that one of my Let's Plays and being like, oh, wow, look at me going in a different order, but you can't challenge the gym, I'm pretty sure. I think it's like the door is locked or something, just dumb like that. And yeah, you can't really do things out of order, which is fair. Pokemon is kind of a linear game, which, you know, it's what it is. It's It's been very successful and very fun with that, so I have no qualms with that. I need to use a Lepa Berry. I certainly would have regretted that. But um, yeah, I think I and a lot of others, I think, tend to agree with this statement. Um, would have rather they just added more Mega Evolutions as opposed to going into Z moves and dy Dynamaxing and all that stuff. Um, like I've seen memes that have been like, you know, 
Mega Evolution is cool. Give us more Mega Evolutions. Oh, what's that? Z moves? No. Mega Evolution. What's that? Gigantamaxing? No. Mega Evolution. It's like, listen to your fans, uh, Nintendo or Pokemon Company. All right, Dodrio. It's probably faster. Let's use Rock Tomb to slow it down. Acupressure is a cool move. It increases one of your stats by two stages, but it's random. So, in this case, speed, which makes my Rock Tomb kind of futile. I guess I should have used. Is it futile or futile? Maybe both. Um, all right, well, we're going to be slower for a while then, so it's not no use really continuing to do that. So is in Headbutt it is. Yeah, it's a shame, because now that, now that like Gen 6 and Gen 5 are older gens, I can see a couple of those Pokemon easily getting Mega Evolutions. And I guess um, there is, like, Fancy and Aldino, I think, have Mega Evolutions, but um, most Mega Evolutions are from, like, Gen 1 and Gen 3. Couple Gen 2, I guess. Gen, you know, the older gens, which is, you know, sensible. The nostalgia, I totally get that and don't disagree at all. But I think as they go on, they could easily add Mega Evolutions to more Pokemon if they so chose. So we'll see what Generation 9 comes out with. I think it'll still be a while for that, thankfully. Give me, give me a little bit more time to catch up. But um, please, please don't add any more mechanics. Just, you know, you don't have to make it fun and new and shiny. I don't, you know, it's also kind of the same thing, I guess, like I said, with like Horde battles and Rotate battles and, you know, like you, you kind of can push a good thing too far where um you know double battles were great I mean, that was a great thing mega evolutions were great but when you really push it to like you know ex the extremes and try things it, it becomes a little bit much and i don't fault them for trying new things but I, d I do i guess the one thing i will give them is that um if i'm not mistaken there are not mega evolutions or z moves in gen 8 they did away with those to simplify things and try something new, so that's fine. But I kind of think now that they've done that, maybe go back to having, you know, Mega Evolution and maybe Z moves, but not, not other mechanics in the next gen. So um, I'm gonna go for Metal Claw because if if Zatu plays it smart and it uses wishes effectively, as it seems to be doing, this is I guess a smart bird keeper. They always say birds are really smart. I guess bird keepers are too. Um, and the only way I'm going to win this is... I guess I could get flinches. Flinches are an attack boost. Um, let's go for the flinches, actually, because it does more damage. And it's a 20% chance either way. Now, I guess Metal Claw is a little bit more accurate, so there is that. And we're confused. I could switch. That'd make this nice and easy, but I want to see what Slate can do. All right, so confusion's gonna make this harder, though. I guess the one thing I will say, I know I'm switching strategies here, is that um, the attack boost is permanent, where for for the battle until I switch, which I'm not planning to. Um, whereas the flinch is only for one turn, so I could easily get the flinch, get some bad confusion chances, and then it wouldn't matter. Hey, there we go. Nice to avoid that air slash. So I'd really love to get an attack boost here. Come on, Slate. Air Slash can flinch your Pokemon. 18 damage, so we can survive one more. As long as it's not a crit. Well, I think I think we decided crits were 1.5 in this gen, so... I actually could survive a crit. Can I survive a regular Air Slash and a Confusion damage? So it's just Confuse Ray, not Swagger, which makes me think I probably could. Ironically, if I was getting Swagger, I'd have a better chance of winning this, because I could actually do more damage to him as well. Okay, so I should be able to survive the Air Slash. But use Wish. Ooh. Alright, I'm going to risk it. Hopefully I don't regret this. Um, probably will, but, you know. If he uses a different move or it misses... Psychic. Well, that's going to be doubly not very effective, so... Ooh, it did a lot more damage than I thought it would, though. Okay, and we didn't get the attack boost, so... Um, let's just go ahead and switch to... How about Dan? Alright, give it our best shot. If we had a recovery move like Recover or um, Roost, then that would have made this a lot easier, but um, Metagross can't really learn a recovery move. Not a reliable one, at least. Wow. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have switched in. See, this is why I don't like switching Pokemon in. If they faint, I would have Dan would have been able to beat this set, too, possibly. But because I switched it in, it took kind of free damage on the switch. Now, we'll see. I'll have to be faster. I am faster. I did hit. I'm worried, though. That, too, I think is actually decently special defensive. Yeah. So not quite. So I definitely would have been able to beat it if I had done this. So see, by 
by trying to save Metagross, I've just doomed Dan. Um, but anyway, uh, give it a shot. All right, Eve, you're next. <laughs> this is a tough battle. This is a formidable Zatu for a Pokemon that's not really that great in general. You know, no offense to Zatu. Um, yeah, for this stage in the game, it's actually not bad. Got good moves and uh, decent stats. But it will be outclassed once we get to like level like 50 or so. That too will pose, pose a lot less of a threat to us. And once our Pokemon are fully evolved. That's a big part of it too, is that our Matang and our Expelled are uh, two of our unevolved Pokemon. Alright, well, sorry about that, Dan. I guess I could use a Revive. But I think we're actually almost in... Um, yeah, it's too, gonna take too long. The sad part is it takes longer to scroll down to Citrus, but anyway. Alright, so, it's probably enough battling and musing for one episode. What did the sign say? I didn't read that, did I? Oh, to Moss Deep. Okay. Didn't read the last part, don't care. Uh, cause Moss Deep is our destination, so... I don't know, maybe we'll... Are there any other battles here? Uh, this is Fisherman. Alright, let's face you and then we'll head to Moss Deep. We'll probably, um, I don't know. We'll see. Two Pokemon, Jonah. Oh, he should have a whale. Please have a whale lord. That'd be so cool. Like Jonah and the whale, like the, the old Bible story. That'd be, uh, that'd be cool. Um, I think Blood is actually pretty fast. It is. And Flail does more damage the more, the less health you have. So, or the less health the Pokemon using it has. So, don't know why he used it right away. I guess maybe bird keepers are smart and fishermen not so much. Well, hey, my, my granddad was a fisherman, and my nana is a fisherwoman. So, um, I grew up when I was a kid, they took us fishing all the time, so... Definitely no offense to fisher people. Actually, I think a lot of my family, um... Cause my papa was from, uh, the eastern shore of, um, Maryland. And, um, it's a lot more rural there, a lot of, like, coastal you know, fishing villages. I do think I have some of that in my blood. I think I mentioned that when we first got to, um, Slateport a long time ago, that... Something about like the the ocean has always and not just the I love the ocean, I love the ocean, but like seaside towns, like and not like resort towns, which of course are beautiful too. But again, everybody loves resort towns. But like old like fishing towns, I just really love it. Like I don't know if you guys ever saw the movie Flipper. It's like a kids movie. Um, but I I loved the movie when I was a kid. But just like the, like the lifestyle there, where it's all like you know boating and fishing and being really tuned to nature and just you know relaxing and palm trees and it just. And it always seemed really cool. I'm sure I would enjoy it if I like moved there permanently, because, you know, I'm also a a person who enjoys my internet and my video games a lot, clearly. Um, but you know, I think I definitely I always say that if I, you know, right now I'm really into like video games and technology and space. But if I was around like 100 years ago or 200 years ago, I think I would have been really into like the sea. Like I could even see myself being like a sailor and like living on the sea, because it's like the closest thing to that. Ooh, dive. Okay. So, um, Dive is a Water-type attack that I think is physical, and um, I hope they increase the damage. It used to not be very good. I think it used to have like 60 like Dig, and they increased it to 80, and I hope they've increased it further. Um, we're just going to waste a move here, so let's just use, I don't know, Bulldoze. I think, oh, that's right, we're, we're slower. Ah, well, that's okay. Well, that's good, then Bulldoze will make us faster, so that actually was the right move. Um... <clears throat> Excuse me. Super effective, but Relicat has such good defenses it didn't really do that much. But that's okay. As long as this hits, we should win. And it hits. Good. Um, but I really hope being like a two-turn move... The only reason I would not be okay with it being at base power 80 is because Waterfall is better in almost every way. So why not give it some advantage? I guess you could say the same for Earthquake, that it's better than Dig in almost every way. So, you know, that's fair. Some moves aren't meant to be better. They're just meant to um, be like placeholder moves as you level up. But I guess because Dive is an HM, it it makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, we will get Dive eventually. But even once we do, we'll need this Gym Badge to use it. Oh, sorry. I have a bit of a dry throat. I, I don't think it's COVID, thankfully. I haven't really been anywhere. I actually, I'm actually venturing out tomorrow for two things. Um, but they will both be outdoors, and of course I'll be keeping my distance. So, you know... You just gotta play it safe. 
they say rest outdoors are you know, as long as you're not like right next to somebody or you know <laughs> right on top of them as long as you keep six six feet away or or uh, your distance and don't stick close um fresh air is really really safe so like, if you're gonna hang out with people do it outdoors it's, it's so many more times safer than it is in uh enclosed environment anyway that's been enough for my public health announcement Moss Deep City, our slogan, Cherish Pokemon. All right, so let's explore the city a little bit, see what it has to offer. And then we will uh, end the episode and maybe challenge the gym when we come back. Lisa and Tate and Moss Deep Gym have very mysterious powers. Their powers are paranormal, like psychic type Pokemon. If you have any trouble, you may want to visit the gym. I actually do, now that you mentioned, I have a little bit of... I don't want to call it a headache. It's not a headache, but my head feels... heavy? I don't know. Um, oh! Steven, that's right, Steven's house is here. And uh, he gave it King's Rocks. King's Rock is cool. It makes all your Pokemon's moves have a 10% chance to flinch. Um, and normally it's not that good. It's, it's a fun one to use. Um, but what's kind of cool about it is that you could use it on a Pokemon that does a multi-damaging attack. Like, say, Fury Swipes or Fury Cutter or um, more often stronger ones like Rock Blast or Icicle Spear. Um... And every time you, you hit, you have a chance to, to trigger that uh, flinch chance. It's actually almost like overpowered, where because you have a 10% chance to flinch five times in a row, that's, it means you have a 0.9 to the power of five chance of actually getting an attack off, which I think is around 50% or maybe even 40%. Um, I guess I do have my handy calculator right here. 0.9 to the power of five. See, who said math wouldn't be useful? And error syntax. Well, that's not right, because I didn't hit the 9 button hard enough, apparently. And 59% chance. Okay, so you do have a 60% uh, chance, almost, of getting an attack through. A little higher than I thought, but... Um, but still, you know, for a move that can do a lot of damage, not bad. Especially if you have an ability. One of the um, strategies is... Uh, to have like a cloister which has the ability skill link which means when you use a multi-attack move like icicle spear or rock blast it always hits five times so it's actually incredibly powerful if a, if a cloister gets off a um i'll let you guys read this if you want to um if uh if, if a cloister can get off a shell smash it becomes incredibly difficult to defeat it's a, a very strong pokemon that i'm surprised it doesn't get more usage to be honest because it can have um, it's super fast, super strong, it has a move that essentially does 125 base power damage, and Ice and Rock have really good coverage, um, and it can hold King's Rock, to, so even if it doesn't knock you out, you have a 40% chance to flinch, so it's just, it's great. Um, and if you have a priority move, like, oh, you're, I'll finish off with the priority, it has, uh, it can learn, uh, what's the Ice priority move? Um, ice, ooh, Ice Shard. Um, so, like, you know, Shell Smash, Ice Shard, Icicle Spear, and Rock Smash, with uh, King's Rock, it's just an amazing, very tough move set. So I thought this window was crooked. I'm like, why did, why did, why is there a crooked window here? But it's not crooked. It's just a diamond, um, which is cool, but more expensive, um, and maybe not as practical as well. Probably hard to get blinds for, but hey, it is cool. Rule of cool, right? So you guys probably know whose house we're in. Uh, all the stones are kind of a giveaway. Unfortunately, there we go, Steven. Unfortunately, the younger Mr. Stone is not home. It's like a secret door. It looks suspiciously like a secret, bleh, suspiciously like a secret door. Um, if you're wondering why I wasn't asked using the repel, I have not run out of super repels. I decided to use max repels for this time just to get rid of them. One less thing clogging up my inventory. All right. So I thought Steven was here. Maybe he's only here after you beat the Pokemon League. Uh, actually, he gives you, um, if it's anything like the original games, he gives you Beldum as a reward once you beat the game. So that's why I was saying that. I mean, can you guys imagine if I just got my Beldum now? Like we almost have a Metagross, so. I think it was much more fun to uh, get it at the start of the game. Once again, thank you, Neo. Um, so I, I'm very, very happy with that decision. Her husband measures everything based on Pokeblocks. Interesting. Your Matang likes you about as much as it likes Pokeblocks. Oh, a little more. Well, I am honored, Matang. Thank you. I think at this point, with all like the gym leaders we've defeated, and I've been trying not to make them faint, and all the um, steps we've taken, and a couple massages, most of my team probably likes me really good by now. Um... All right, Tate and Lisa, the Mystic Combinations. So as you guys might have guessed, if you didn't already know, um, the seventh gym is a double gym, which is so cool. They added double battles, and they have a double gym leader. They haven't done that since, to my knowledge, at least not through Gen 6. 
So um, I really hope they do that more. That was just really fun. Uh, and they are psychic type, as that one person said. I don't know why I'm here. I don't really need anything. Um, curious what they have to say, though. Netballs and dive balls. Oh, are they still available? I totally scrolled past them, I guess. Oh, no. He did say used to be, so maybe you get them elsewhere now? I feel like we've seen them somewhere, but I'll have to, um, I'll have to stock up. Netballs are really cool because they're really good at catching water and bug Pokemon, so I think they're actually the best ones to use, besides like a Master Ball or, you know, some other conditions. Yes, I want a TM. Quash, ooh. Uh, I do know what that does. Um, let me finish my thought first before I forget it. Uh, it's too late. Netballs, yes. Um, so it can be very useful against water and bug Pokemon, and dive balls are useful when you're diving. So I'm not. I assume a dive ball is better when you're diving than a um, net ball would be. Otherwise, like every Pokemon you find while diving is a water type, I think, or pretty much every Pokemon. Uh, maybe every Pokemon. What else would you find? So I assume then that it's better. But anyway, um, right. Uh, her sweetie gave it when her sweetie gave it to her when she proposed. She's not a trainer. Oh, well, don't give it away. Keep it as a memento, or I don't know. I guess it's nice, but also I like how that's kind of weirdly phrased. Like I have no problem with her proposing, but she proposed and he gave her a present. Like, <laughs> like did he just have a present ready? Like, you know, will you marry me? Yes. By the way, here's a TM. Like, like you know, this guy's a trainer who just thought he had to give a gift when he was proposing and dug around his bag to see what he had. And he had this dumb TM that he didn't want that wasn't any good. So I'd actually be offended if I was her. Maybe it's better that she's not a trainer and didn't figure that out because I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Um, all right, so what Quash does is makes the target move last, which you're probably like, well, when would I ever use that? They're always, if I use it, they're already going last or they've already gone. Um, and it's only for the rest of that turn. It's not going forward. But it's useful in double battles, and I guess triple battles as well. So if you have a double battle and you need your partner Pokemon to... So say you have... Oh, it's hard to describe. So say you are the fastest Pokemon on the field, Pokemon A. Your opponent has B, which is second fastest. Your other stronger Pokemon on your side is C. And the opponent's fourth Pokemon will just say is D. Um, if you know that your opponent's B, which is faster than your C, can knock out your C... But that your C, if it went first, could knock out B instead. So essentially, whichever, whichever one of B and C go first knocks out the other. Your A, who's super fast but maybe not as strong, can use Quash on B, therefore making it go last. Therefore, your partner, C, will go first, <laughs> knocking out B. So it's a very niche use. I'm sure that it's been used at some point effectively in competitive battling, but I, it's, it can't be very frequently and if i've confused the heck out of you i don't blame you and i apologize because it's if i had a piece of paper i could show you guys really easily but i i don't and i don't really care that much so anyway let's visit like one more house and then we'll we'll call it an episode there's a space center here too which i'm really looking forward to when i was young i traveled the world as a secret base expert even now i've become an old weezer my passion has not waned I'm awaiting impatiently for a secret base to appear just beyond that door. Oh, I do have secret power. Can I make a secret base? Apparently not. You could just, you know, get an addition added on. Maybe be a little proactive, you know? That'd be good. Well, at least he's organized. All right, so I think I I cut up on all of my trains of thought that I started this episode. If not, I apologize. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if there's one. If there's ever something, I'm sure there is, that I never get back to. Because, like I said, it's just... I'm not usually this, this like scatterbrained, I promise, in real life I'm actually, you know, I'm, I'm a multitasker, so I do tend to bounce from thing to thing, but it's it's usually not anywhere nearly this bad. Um, I can also focus a lot when the need requires it, but because I'm also playing a game, my brain's like multi-processing. Um, it, it, it's hard. Uh, it's definitely a challenge, but one I enjoy. Um, so if I do ever like start a really interesting train of thought and you're like, oh, I want to hear more about that, and I just never get back to it, just let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to, if I remember what I'm talking about, um, it might help you leave a timestamp because otherwise, you know, I'm gonna, you're going to see this a year from now. I'm not going to remember what I was talking about in the middle of this episode. But if you say, hey, what were you saying at 11.17 or whatever, um, I, will, I will probably respond to your comment and let you know. Uh, anyway, that is going to be it for this episode. Um, I am actually off work tomorrow, uh, even though it's not the weekend. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be really busy tomorrow, so I do actually need to get up uh, fairly early. But I think I'll have time to do one more uh, episode. So 
Um, we, barring anything in our way, we'll probably face the gym leaders, which should be a lot of fun. So uh, that'll be a cool double battle. Hope you guys enjoy it. So please stay tuned.